You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. So we have just witnessed something. We have just witnessed a brand new era in entertainment. And that is artists formerly known as douchebags. So what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is, is well, art is formerly known, but now they're douchebags. Uh, what I mean by that is, back in the day, we had the Rat Pack. Nowadays, you know, we had the what the Brat Pack in the '80s. Now we have the douchebag. Pack. We, we we had the frat pack in the in the early aughts. We did have the frat pack, but now we have the douchebag pack of group of directors that are just total total douchebags. And that's exactly what the Zack Snyder is a headline in that group. Let me tell you who the douchebag of director pack is. It is Zack Snyder, Paul W. S. Anderson. I think you and I both can agree on that sure, one. Sure, sure. M. Night Shyamalan. Okay. Such a such a douchebag. Michael Bay. And the controversial one, the one that's like, are you sure? But then everybody's like, yeah, I mean, like, it kind of seems like it, Christopher Nolan. I mean, that is the douchebag pack. This movie is I mean, you du- this movie's douchey. You could have put, like, Brian Singer in there, too. Right? Brian Singer as well. This movie is, I'm not going to say god-awful, because that's, like, my favorite thing to say. This movie's <laughs> shit. This movie's really, really bad. Oh, Jordan, I am glad to hear you say that. There, There is a moment. Where after watching this movie, I, I had thought to myself, I'm just like, oh man, there's been a hot trend lately, or streak rather, where you and I are disagreeing on movies somewhat. And so I was watching this and I'm just in disbelief almost after watching it, as if to be like, what what just happened? What right. just, where did this, this two and a half hours go? And I had thought to myself, there's no way Jordan can like this movie. This might be the ultimate test here. Because if you do, we, we're going to have a, a sit down and we're going to mm-hmm. talk. We're going to talk about it, which which is great. Um, but I'm glad that that uh, you you feel the same way to do about this movie. There was. Whew, I, let's talk about the good stuff first. What good stuff? There was some real cool kills. We had a lot of blood and guts. The premise, I thought, for the most for early on, I was actually on board with it. Oh, you mean how it's like aliens? Oh, well, we'll get into that a little bit more. I'm talking about the – take a step back of that before we get into okay. the, the, the possible robots, the, the possible time loop aspect, or right. the now confirmed alien aspect of it too, um, which is – again, feels like we're going into elements of Cloverfield here that just didn't need to go there. Anyway, that um, we have Las Vegas taken over by an Area 51 experiment, otherwise known as zombies or – what was the other? There's a bunch of other ones. The Undead or the Walking Dead, the whatever you want to call it. You're right. Okay, so the Shamblers premise, or things what they're called, but yeah. The premise is a very, very amazing 50s and then later on in the 80s B plot. I mean, this is this would be perfect if it was Sly, Mel Gibson, and Schwarzenegger together, like uh, kind of like Expendables. Like, this would be perfect. Like, this would be like Expendables 4. That would be perfect. What a great concept, because I know what I'm going to get. Um, but the concept is interesting. But I had to read the plot synopsis on Wikipedia to actually understand that these are not actually zombies, that this is a soldier mixed in with alien DNA to create this. Yeah, That was not said in the movie at all, Eric. No, no. There was a lot that went missing, and hopefully we'll catch it in Army of the Dead, the Snyder Cut, coming out later on this year, everyone. Stay tuned. <laughs> There's actually going to be an anime movie prequel uh, already coming out. There is a lot that happened in this beginning. I, I missed, I guess, when the Area 51, the payload crate first crashed um, in an accident with a newlywed couple getting a blowjob in the car. That there were two aliens, UFOs, spotted above some some sleuths, internet sleuths. Uh, we were able to take a picture of that and show it online. But 
There are two aliens that were watching them this entire time. They zipped by. It was unnecessary. I, I, they told me without telling, I guess, but also that he just made it really hard to assume anything else. So I, I, I just don't really know what was going on. Well, what was going on was as soon as I pressed play, because, again, we picked this movie. Well, I picked the movie. Let's be honest here. And I'm like, this looks like a fun little romp. You know, and as soon as you click play and you got these two soldiers arguing about what's the payload, it has such a B to a high C grade level production. Mm. I was like, this is the guy that gave us Dawn of the Dead, one of my favorite remakes of all time. And this is the guy who gave us Watchmen, one of my favorite superheroes of our time. Like, what is this? Like, what happened to you, Zach? It seemed to be very corny. The oh, movie I, I felt was trying to take itself seriously, but at the same time, these little parts in it felt cheesy and almost as if that was the director's humor trying to leak out into this as if to say, like, oh, we're, we're having fun here, remember so? But then again, it proceeds to take itself seriously. Is it, though, or is it Zack Snyder doesn't know what he's doing? Because we get this horrible, horrible beginning part, and then we get the zombie alien, or zombie, we'll just call him, you know, and he kills the military men, and he overlooks Vegas, and I watched the opening credits um, and probably about four times. I would, I would actually legitimately say that, because the opening credits was amazing. He only knows how to do one thing, Snyder does, and that's only how to make opening credits. Would you argue that the opening credits of Watchmen wasn't great? Uh, it had um, more slow mo. Right, started I mean, off I with some some really undead like boob shot. The only that's one, stupid. One of the only ones you get in the movie. I think the only one you get in the movie actually. Stupid. And uh, yeah, well, whatever. It's showgirls. But it's stupid. It it it, it just shows it's me. It's definitely not the dumbest thing that happened in this movie. No, it's not. But this is just to show me how much of a douchebag Snyder is. Hence, he's a part of the douchebag pack. You didn't laugh as much as I thought you would with that joke. <laughs> but before the end of the show tonight, you hear to hear first, folks. I'm going to get Eric to actually back me on this douchebag pack. Because... I'm like, not disagreeing. Sn but he's a douchebag. These like, are pretentious this... people, man. These are is directors. Is it pretentious? Or is it just like... I'm trying to be Robert Rodriguez. This is like a Robert, Rag Zig, uh, Robert Rodriguez Planet of Terror kind of film. That's what this should have been. But, I, oh. I just don't know what this was. He he is a writer. He is a he did the screenplay. I feel that like maybe he had a vision, and I just don't know what happened. I guess there was some casting issues as well too. Uh, the character played by Tig Notaro was actually Krista Delilla Delia Del whatever Delia. Yeah. And he then backed out of the movie due to some controversy, some Twitter controversies. You can imagine it's related to mm -hmm. whatever the hell. And they put Tignataro in. She made shot her scenes separately from almost everybody. I think Dave Bautista said that he had not ever met Tignataro once, even though they have a lot of scenes together in this movie. She's my favorite. Out of the whole movie, the helicopter pilot, Tig, whatever her real name, whatever yeah, her character's yeah, she's name is. Great. She's my favorite. She's absolutely hilarious. Uh, it seems that the internet really is loving Dieter. Which one's Dieter? He is the locksmith. No, fuck that guy. So in this movie, the premise is that Las Vegas has been quarantined, blocked off by these trailers stacked like three or four high. Mm -hmm. And it just barricades all of Las Vegas. They're able to control it, and then everything inside is the undead. It has not branched out whatsoever. And so, of course, that makes it a smart idea to put the quarantine people living right outside of the quarantine. Don't move them elsewhere, away from something or, you know, uh, from the threat. Move them right outside. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm, I'm interrupting. I'm very sorry. So in the opening credits, they showed images of people naked in cages being sprayed by fire hoses. So that is outside of the shipping container. That's outside of Vegas. That's like in a like a suburb. Okay. Is that what you're telling me? 
right? Is that what you're telling me? Because you said the quarantine zone, right? Is... There's a quarantine. The people that had to flee Las Vegas, who lived in Las Vegas, right? there is now a tent city outside of the quarantine, in, in the zombie quarantine, or whatever you okay. want to call them. And that okay. is where they live. And that is where we are introduced to some characters named Gita and uh, the star of the movie. And um, our villain of the movie, um, played by what the hell is her uh, Kate? Yes, Kate. Is she Ward. the villain? No, I'm going to tell you. Uh, oh, she is. God damn it. She's she has you thinking not, but she's actually the biggest bitch in, of all um, because of her. The entire movie fucks up. You know, it, it's she is the biggest problem with this movie, Jordan. Kate is. Yes, absolutely. This chicken. Who is problem. clearly wearing an alien T-shirt with LV426 on it. Yeah, she's got the vol- There's a lot of uh, aliens Easter eggs in here. Too. A lot. But we'll talk. Whatever. Okay, so one of my biggest issues with zombies movies, especially nowadays, and why I don't like this movie at all, is is... I'm not a fan of the show anymore, Eric, but I used to be a big fan of Walking Dead all the way to probably season seven or eight. My watch and I, my, my wife and I watched that religiously every Sunday for like seven, eight years, seven, eight seasons. And the zombies always stayed the same because that's what they are. And when you try to get into this whole realm of, of alphas and they have a thought and I am legend style and this style and this style, it just pisses me off. It tries to show me that the director and the writer doesn't want to make a zombie movie. They're trying to make something else. And I don't like the fact that there's different breeds of zombies. I cannot stomach that at all. It pisses me off. It really does. Well, we got more than just a few. Um, We got, uh, I I don't know, again, this is world building uh, at its poorest because right. it, it's just kind of assuming that you already know what's going on in the world by mentioning it once. And it's just, it, it's, it's, there's so many more questions that come from doing that than the answers that the director maybe wants. You know, he's ahead of the viewer in this, and you don't want that to happen, you know, because you're, you're leading us on to something that we're just maybe not going to get. Which is very frustrating, Eric, because this director knows how to make zombies. One would argue, and that one would be me, if it wasn't for Zack Snyder remaking Dawn of the Dead, we the, the, the zombie craze that it was for almost a decade would not be around if it wasn't for him. That Dawn of the Dead remake was spectacular. Yeah, it, uh, it, trying to think of other... Zombie 20, movies that may, may compare later. to this, you know, it's it is difficult to think of it. Yeah, it's uh, twenty eight days was uh, twenty eight days later was a, was a fun one too. Right. I mean, like you got you have you see, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because there's a group of people, film friends that I know that are like, no, twenty eight days later gave birth to the fast running zombies, but they're not zombies; they're rage. But then we got Snyder coming out in 04 with this with his directorial debut, which I argue is a really good, fun remake. So he should know this genre. I don't know if you know this, doing the research that I do for this movie. This is an actual sequel. This one is? This is a sequel. Really? Absolutely. The 100%. Army of the Dead is, is, is a sequel. 100% it's a sequel to his fucking... Um, uh, Original 2004 movie. A prequel? No, a sequel. This is a sequel. I don't think so. Yes, it is. I will I will fight you this for that. This is a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, explain, it, explain it to me, Jordan, because right. Right, right now, me, let me Army get, of the let me Dead... Because I read it. Yeah. Go ahead. You keep talking while I'm looking this up. You can Army tell of me the how Dead, long it, it started off as a alien... 51 thing and then they just did the Las Vegas thing. It did not go outside of Las Vegas. We hear in this world building when uh, Dave Bautista, uh, the main character, takes his uh, heist team, which he recruits in the first, uh, what, half hour, 40 minutes of this movie, is that you get the relations of the characters of the heist, you know, ocean style almost. You get everybody involved, you get their pay, 
uh, the rules of what they're doing. They have the wild card here, you know, the, the cool demolitions guy here, oh, whatever the hell. Ready into the zombie fight. And when they go in, they are told the news of what's going on as well, too. And we, the viewer, are also told that they are very aware that Vegas is infected and they're going to nuke it. So everyone's living their life normally. They, uh, the, the day goes on and everyone's just still doing their jobs and it's not a threat. Whereas in Dawn of the Dead, the entire world is basically decimated. Okay, so I'm right and I'm wrong and I'm going to go with you on it. Reading up what Snyder has said in a few websites that I was looking at while you're looking at it, while you were talking about it, Snyder has said that when he wrote Dawn, that he wrote this as a side script called Army of the Dead. And pretty much all of the Vegas stuff was yeah. his original script. But things change, plans change, and then he moved it around. And now this is not considered an actual sequel. Okay. So, I mean, when they arrive into Vegas and do their heist and they have all these zombies and they have different breeds of zombies that was his original idea for the sequel but then things changed so okay let's catch up here scott Splitting our hands. main character dave batista rallies his heist crew some are he's closer with some others he doesn't really care about they get lucky on their first try and they find dieter who's obviously the world's greatest locksmith so i'm hoping, mm -hmm. hoping they got a tip on that they are recruited by a guy named bly tanaka who owns the bly hotel and suite in Las Vegas. He is recruiting this team to go into his safe in the basement and fight the zombies and get the money, go to the helicopter up top of the hotel and get out of there. Easy peasy, Japanesey. Lemon squeezy now. That's right. That's right. So issue number one with this. If you are a multi-billionaire rich guy who has a hotel and casino in Vegas and you have like, what do you say, like 200 some million or maybe more in his, in his vault, he would say, hey, I need you to go and get the vault. Do this for me. Hey, by the way, here's the combination. Yeah. Also, here are uh, the triggers to the three very lethal traps. That are uh, illegal. They call them out, too. This is how you do it because the whole point is to get me money. Get me my money. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's it. Yeah, so that seemed... That was horrible. That seemed very weird. All of it was just like, what the fuck was the purpose of that? What was the reason for that, Jordan? Mm -hmm. Reason is kills, body count, more gore. I well, mean, they, that was the only reason. The day they were going in, they did add in a few extra bodies um, in the one Goose Guzman's, uh, Guzman's uh, troop. He mm -hmm. brings in uh, the, the girl... Uh, Chambers, who has an unfortunate first death there. We'll talk about that. And also, um, a uh, the, the head of security of Tanaka Security, Martin, joins too for precaution's sake. He wants to make sure the mission's going the way it's supposed to be, right? And he's actually, already, actually, he already has, like, you know, the, the evil Devin, you know, the, the uh, double-crossing look on his face. That's actually one of my favorite parts of the movie. When not really the Ripley character, you know, but uh, but the uh, shorter hair blonde chick that's kind of a badass knows everything about the zombies. She she calls hey, coyote, him right out. Lily. Well, okay, oh, she calls him right out. She's just like, "Hey, you're here to spy on us. Fuck you!" Like, I just loved how the movie realized that. I just loved it. Can we talk about Dave Bautista? This is a guy who I'm going to continue to watch because either a I'm going to watch his career completely fucking flounder. And just be another joke and a mockery of a field wrestler trying to be an actor. Or he's going to be the next Rock when Rock retires. Because this guy can't act. I mean, Dave Bautista can only do Drax and that's it. Or maybe it's because we have James Gunn at the helm and he can push bad actors to do good. Because Dave Bautista has been shit in everything that I've seen him in. Besides... <laughs> Guardians, and I really enjoyed him in the opening of fucking Blade Runner 2049. I mean, he wasn't good as Mr. Hanks, Inspector. Uh, he wasn't good in this. He was bad. He was really, really I bad. I don't think that was his fault. I think that was the fault of the script, to be quite honest with you. That's that's just me saying that, but he's going to be in Knives Out as, uh, 2 as well. Oh, um, Jesus. He's, gonna be, he's in Dune. We get to see uh, him in that. Um, 
He's in. Uh, he was in that spy movie that came out where he did basically rocks the fairy or whatever the hell, right. babysitter or something like that. He's. I mean, he's he's moving up, man. He he's getting work. He's he's he has to keep this work going on. But I I don't mind him, man. He's a good action star. I I think he's good. Just kind of have the, has that that, that big teddy. Uh, that big teddy bear kind of look. No, I'm not, not saying he's not the greatest, but I mean he he definitely you know uh, feels the demand for having this this kind of big guy action star. You know, you know he feels he the Rock. You know, you, just like you said, as the Rock is getting older and slowing down a baby a bit more, David uh, Dave Batista can feel that in because he has uh, the comedy from Guardians of the Galaxy and he has the action. From from this, he's trying to do the serious roles, but we'll see how that goes. Well, fans, you hear it here first from my mouth. The Rock is this generation's, our generation, Schwarzenegger, who's not great, but he made some fun movies. So that's The Rock. Batista is our uh, Dolph Lundgren. That's Gen Z's Dolph Lundgren. He's going to make a fun couple movies here and there, but his career is going to flounder, and all of a sudden The Rock's going to make – you know, some action movie with a bunch of other wrestlers and he's just going to join it 20 years later. and People are going to be so excited. I'm not a fan of him right now. I just, it's just, I am more excited to see the downfall besides him as the worst thing ever. I don't know the actor who plays him, but I wish it was that guy's agent because I would fire myself. I'm like, Hey, I don't want to be your agent anymore, dude. You're an idiot. Zeus. Who is Zeus? They don't call it out on the movie. Zeus is the head zombie. That's his name in the script. Yes, uh, what the this fuck is, the, is this? the head alpha zombie. So the big part of this is that when the heist crew goes to the quarantine camp, they are introduced to Lily, uh, aka the Coyote, your Ripley character, who's mm -hmm. just overall badass type of thing, mm -hmm. and she is going to be walking them in to Vegas. And to help them on their mission. So she has an extra body uh, in this whole thing, and she will be coming along to, to, to help. No fucking reason at all. She's not getting paid. She's just doing it because, I don't know, she's bored. And also, Kate Ward, Scott Dave Batista's daughter, uh, is going to come to, because she made a promise to Gita. This is, the, this is why I'm bringing this up, and this is why Kate deserves to be the fucking villain of this movie. Because she just goes, no. And puts her foot down and says, Daddy, I want to go. I'm going to go without you, whatever the hell. It doesn't matter what you say. I don't have any weapons or experience or anything else like that. I'm just going to go with the one Glock that you gave me. I'm going to put a little clip on my leg and we're going to go in. I need to find Gita. Gita told me. She promised me that I should stay and watch her kids if she ever were to not come back. And so instead of obeying that fucking promise, I'm going to go in and look for her instead. Wearing a tank top in a zombie apocalypse city. You're going to wear the least amount of clothing possible. Yeah, everyone's Love all it. geared up and and just like marined out looking dope as shit. And she's just going to come in with uh, her pom-poms and just... And, and again, she is just a horrible fucking character. The... Uh, the oh. <laughs> yeah, calm down. <laughs> She is. She's horrible. There's a there's a point in this movie because they're going in. They have a small window, like ninety something hours before the nuke is being dropped on Fourth of July because the president thought it was cool. Thought that mm -hmm. was great to point out, by the way. Mm -hmm. The window has now been cut to twenty four or like an hour and a half. Hour and a half, yeah. An hour and a half. So upon hearing this news. What does she do? Run off on her fucking own to try to get Gita without any communication. Everyone has walkie-talkies. None of them use them. The entire fucking yeah. movie. So none of them are like, you know, hey, where you at? What you know? Maybe one time for the helicopter, but that was just to add some ticket scenes, probably. That's See, there was no there was no earpiece stuff like we had Avengers. Like there was like there was no communication. It was it was absolute craziness. And then the Ripley character that I say. She's like, oh, in order for us to pass, we have to give a sacrifice. That is when I turned in the movie, Eric. I was like, don't tell me you have different kind of breeds of zombie. I can deal with the smart zombie a la Day of the Dead in the 80s, you know, the third movie in the sure. Romero-verse. I can deal with the one. That's fine. But you're going to tell me that there are different – I'm not going to say races. I guess breeds would be the best part. 
but like different breeds of zombies. So you got your stupid zombies and then you got the smart zombies that are super fast and you have to offer a sacrifice. So she shoots the D bag in the leg and then you get what they call the queen, which, oh my God, Zack Snyder loved this actress in this because the camera never panned away from her at all. Uh, he was <laughs> he was so excited that she was doing all these crazy spider-like moves. So excited to have her. You could tell he spent all day just praising this actress. And um, they take this guy, the smart zombies, to turn him into more smart zombies in a ceremony in a pool but we never see the ceremony and that is again detriment to the writing team because it's like uh how do they turn them so they just bite them and that's it so the so so zeus who's the alpha big uh, area 51 zombie alien thing he bites you and you're automatically become an alpha. I mean, I mean, I mean, but a smart zombie, I guess. Like that's it. That's it. There's nothing else. Yeah, I, I guess so. Like I don't know how it. So I would imagine. Right? That, yeah, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm. I'm gonna know this too because Zeus also uh, apparently still has um, his reproductive organs working as well. As we okay. see okay. later on here too. So this this is where it gets weird because in the alpha thing, I can understand that because. That makes sense that this is an alien kind of experiment. I get that. You should have told me that in the front, and that way I could have been a little bit more forgiving with you giving these different alien or these different zombies a different role or class or a hierarchy even. Um, it was just kind of weird. Um, but now we're getting to a part where he has a he he's impregnated one of the other zombies. <sighs> okay, now when you say he, say this again so the fans who don't know. Spell this out very carefully. Who's he? Zeus. The Who is a... Alpha alien zombie. Who's dead. He is undead, presumably, yeah. And he uh, takes the the main girl uh, zombie who... Queen. Queen. Um, and um, listens to her belly uh, in this first introduction um smiles or does some sort of approving kind of screech and is happy we are then led to assume that this um species can breed and they are going to have a baby a so, zombie you know, alien baby i want you to experience this because eric you know me very well but i want the audience to really know there's no bullshit true story i want you the audience to join me on this adventure, okay? This is a moment of venture time with Jordan. So Jordan works six, seven days a week, and he doesn't have much time. But he likes to take time to do this show because he likes to talk about movies, especially hanging out with his buddy, Eric, and sometimes Sarah when she joins us. So it's a long day. It's hot. It's 90 degrees today here in Ohio, and I come home and watch my daughter's last soccer game. She gets a she gets a medal and she's excited. And I said, honey, I'm going to go to the garage the rest of the afternoon because I guess Zack Snyder can't understand to make a movie that's an hour and a half. So I'll see you in two and a half hours. Now, the reason I'm expelling this for you fans to make this really long is because this is when this happens. And Eric's probably going to giggle. I'm drinking a Bud Light Seltzer mango. I'm sitting in my garage. Eric has been in my garage. You've seen my bar set up. I'm sitting there. I'm watching this scene play out where they take the guy, the sacrifice, and we get the grunts and the groan. And my one right leg is crossed over my left knee. And I'm just like, why is Zeus, which I don't know his name was Zeus, but why is the main zombie kneeling and putting his head on her belly? What? And I had a half can of Bud Light Seltzer, and I stood up, and I chucked the fucking can. Seltzer everywhere. And I screamed, what the fuck is this garbage? <laughs> we, You give us not only a zombie baby in the remake of Dawn of the Dead, now you're going to have him, like, really? Zombies are now fornicating. Really? They are people, too. That's when I came up with this douchebag pack. 
of just people, Eric, and I'll close my rant on this. Like people that were legitimately good at one point in time, and then they came shit. Paul W. S. Anderson gave us Mortal po- a Mortal Kombat, Event Horizon. Not that great. He's a douchebag. Michael Bay gave us The Rock. Okay, not that good. Bad Boys won. Yeah, all right. Look at that career. It just it's Zack Snyder is such a douchebag, and it pisses me off. Like, that's how mad I was, Eric. Like, I'm I'm mad now again. Like, this is really stupid. If you're going to tell me that in your world, with your douchebagginess, my Snyder Cut bullshit, that you're going to have an alpha zombie named Zeus who lives in a hotel named Apollo or whatever, like, really stupid. And you're going to have a lip... And somehow Queen Zombie is going to have the know all to spread her legs and get fucked by you? I'm done. Movies, movies over at that point, folks. I was pissed. Eric would go on. Because I went, I'm sorry. No, no. I, 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 I lost it, dude. I lost it. As soon as I saw that dead feet is in his hand, I lost. I was like, what the fuck? It was an eye roll for sure. But again... One of just the many things to stack up onto the problems of this movie. I don't think we're going to be able to cover them all, but I mean, the one of some of the popular ones are uh, the physics of the movie, how and the decisions being made. Uh, for instance, I will go to the first death chambers when they go into the hotel for the first time, where they're trying to get into Vegas for the first time. They had to go indoors. And right. it, and they leave kind of a, like a breadcrumbs type of thing because they encounter a room full of hibernating zombies. What the fuck is that? It's, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, but explain to me. Is that literally what it is? So those are just stupid, mindless zombies, and they're literally just in a dark area just sleeping? They're just sleeping. Stand- they're the, yeah, they're just in the bunker. Just like herd animals just, just kind of sitting oh, there. Okay. And, okay, go ahead. And Jesus so Christ. Dave Batista has glow sticks that he will crack and leave on the floor as little breadcrumbs, and then they will, you know, stealthily kind of weave their way through uh, these bodies. Uh, but then we get our our first devious act by Martin, because behind him, um, well, Chambers calls him out on his bullshit, saying you're evil. I don't, I don't trust your fucking bullshit. And he's just like, yeah, whatever. And uh, she's like, you go first, uh, and I'll be the last one because I don't trust you washing her back. He goes, okay. He goes forward. He takes one of the glow sticks, and he throws it in another direction to misguide Chambers, who apparently is not that far behind. I mean, who is actually far behind. In a zombie situation, right. how are you not, you know, like, like by each other? She's a good – she's taking real good social distancing uh, protocols and staying like 20 feet back. She gets oh, lost. Absolutely. She gets – she gets bumped into a bunch of zombies, wakes them up, starts fighting to fight for her life, apparently effortless to poke these guys in the head with a knife. In just a, a simple swing, that knife will go all the way in. It's like a pumpkin. I right. have never st- uh, stabbed somebody in the head before, but I would imagine that that skull is probably not going to be as easy of a watermelon as you think it is. But no. I, I, again, that's kind of a physics thing. She does a great job of fighting her ass out. She right. almost makes it into a point almost. where they get into the hallway and she's just like, help, help, and her team just watches her. They don't right? do a, Did that piss they don't do a Sorry, goddamn right? thing. Nobody. Then, yeah, and then uh, her buddy shoots a gun at the gas can in the back of her, the plastic gas can in the back. It apparently uh, <laughs> sets off an explosion. One of many that we will get. Everything in this movie, when it explodes, it is in a plume of, of flame and smoke in your face in a massive radius, except um, never hitting any of the heroes, too. But everything, no, as far as grenades, uh, I don't yeah. even know. of it. I would imagine that one of the cash registers probably blew up into flames at one point when they shot it. Everything just blows up into flames here. <laughs> a cash registered foiled the villain. We'll talk it's, about it. Yeah, that's another one. It, it uh, felt like an Aqua Teen Hunger Force uh, show. Everything that they would touch the ground just would, would blow up into flame, and it was uh, unfortunate. So that was the first dead, death. we got to move on. Um, why the fuck would Martin do that and jeopardize the whole mission? Like, to do that, you know, it's just like... Well, no, like, no, no, no. He didn't... I will actually argue. I will actually argue with that one. So I can't believe I'm defending this. First of all, before I argue with you on that one, as soon as they all had gas cans on their back, you and I clearly yelled at the screen, somebody's going to get blown up with the gas can. Oh, it's obvious. They're all bombs. Right. They're, every yeah, single one right. of them are bombs. 
Yeah, I mean, that was obvious. Okay, so the reason, okay, so Martin's thought process was really stupid, but how the movie, which is stupid, and the writer who was stupid, who is also the same as the director is stupid, it kind of played out in his favor, in a way. Because, you know, he's like, well, fuck you, bitch. I think actually was his line. And he throws that glow stick away, you know, to just, you know, to distract her to go to someplace else. So as far as all the other team members are concerned, who was already out of the situation, 50 yards away, she probably just bumped into a zombie. They have no idea. What, whatever. It, it's dumb as fuck. The whole... It's dumb as fuck, but it worked for them. The I whole... won't give it that. As as we dig deeper into the plot a bit more, if you can call it that, you realize even more how fucking dumb this is. They get uh, into the casino. They find out that there are other blueprints there, thinking to themselves that they are not the only people who have done this heist before. We'll get more into that in a little bit. So Scott Ward, um, I mean, character, divvies up the team. You go up to the top of the helicopter, fix it and refuel it. I'll go to the generators. You guys go to the sh- safe and start cracking it, and we'll rendezvous, break, and they do so. And while we have that, we have a few heart to hearts and some conversations, um, and some funny times as well. Some character building moments. We have a deep dig now at the vault, where uh, when they open the elevator, they are. Um, at a hallway with two gates, which, by the way, zombies are all trying to get into for some reason. Or maybe they were yeah. there, I would imagine, because of the team before them in, in the chamber number two. But, then, are, but, they, but they wouldn't be trying to get at them because the team's skeletons. Well, maybe so they were no once meat. there and they couldn't get out. You know what I mean? So, but the, Will they be hitting at the fence? Again, stupid director. But go yeah, ahead. Yeah, okay. So they were able to use the key card to get in the first gate. Oh, by the way, kill zombies, of course. And the second gate, the... Um, previous team the heist team before them roasted the key card so they have to blow it open with some c4 Mm -hmm. while this happens uh they had some some sort of profound uh philosophical moment where what if we (laughs) this was us before what if we have you know them they look just like us and then we get (laughs) flashes of the dead bodies to the current heist team and we find that they are wearing the exact same matching wardrobes Douchebag, Eric. Come on. So this director's a douchebag. The character so, Vanderhol. Vanderhol. Is his name Vanderhol? Is that his name? His name's Van. I, okay, let's just name, call him Van because the character Van what a uh, does something that maybe they are stuck in a time loop, um, and they've done this before, and this was the the one that they learned from their mistakes from, or or whatever, you know. Um, again. It, a, a thing that leads to nowhere, much like many other things in mm-hmm. this movie, where they, they hint at, but then don't do anything with. Uh, apparently, everyone in online wanted to see Van with his uh, big circular saw, um, but the only time we get to see it is when the coyote cuts through, I am told, eight-inch reinforced concrete, uh, unreinforced concrete, which is breaking code, I, I believe. And... Um, a saw just is able to be just as sharp as ever. Right, right. And I know all about saws and cutting into concrete recently in my life, and that would be bullshit. I also call bullshit that they get into it, they blow it up, and then the guy, uh, the the uh, the locksmith guy, who this this is Dieter. Like, Respect Dieter. Well, fucking what's his face? Uh, Ocean's Eleven dude uh, would love to have him on his team. Yeah. Yeah, he right? was. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, this guy was able to to crack in thirty minutes. Yeah, the world's toughest safe. So obviously, he's um, just got a massive penis. It's just okay. got to be <laughs> right. I mean, like, if you are the owner of this again, like I said earlier in the show, if you are the owner of this hotel, it's a zombie apocalypse. You hire this people. Just say, hey, when you get down there, if you get down there, here's the code: twenty four. 17, 8. I don't care. I just made those numbers up. Just fucking give them the code. Like, this is nonsense. And then the, in the top... I, oh. <laughs> While this is happening, um, oh. Martin and the Coyote were sent to patrol outside, and this is where we get the real plan of Martin, where he unveils his true scheme as he um, is able to kind of bow tie uh, 
uh, was it buoy tie or whatever the hell it is, uh, you know, uh, uh, get queen. The, the queen, tie her up, and then was able to saw her head off, her still living head moving and twitching, severed from its body. He then bags and says, ha, this is the real mission of why I'm here. That $200 million, man, that ain't shit. This is, will get us, you know, whatever, this is the real WMD. So that's his real thing. He gets oh. the head, and then for some reason, after getting what he came there for, goes back. Why not right. just fucking leave right there? Because you, where they were, complete. where they were when he did that to the queen, where he, when he stole her head, that's where they entered. Yeah. So just be like, oh, oh, I just got to turn around because I'm afraid of, and I love how they uh, called out those two dudes that do the Tigers in Vegas. Fuck. Uh, Siegfried, Siegfried and Roy. They're like, oh, see that zombie tiger? That's a Siegfried and Roy tiger. And like as soon as they said that, the camera panned right to Martin. So I was like, oh, he's going to get destroyed by the tiger, obviously. And it's just like, hey, I got the head. Right behind me is the exit. Deuces. No, he goes right back. And he's like telling the Ripley character, don't say anything. Like, oh, my Here's the other God. thing, though, and the big part about it is that if that was Tanaka's goal from the whole fucking time, why not just get a group of mercenaries, nay, just one or two fucking people to go into Vegas and do just that? Yeah, not it that was, hard. Yeah, exactly. Why take the effort of getting a whole crew of people to go into this and kill them for no reason. Because I, I don't, don't think that was the plan. I, I, I don't think that was the plan. I think Martin just – Martin is clearly the sleazeball from Aliens. I brought it up earlier. Now we're getting into Aliens territory. If I was Cameron, I would probably file a lawsuit for theft. I mean at, at this point in time, every single point is Aliens. Now I know from years of doing this show – Fans know I'm an Aliens fan, Eric. You know I'm an Aliens fan, but this is fucking theft. I mean, everything this point is. This is ridiculous. Even the, oh my God, the helicopter has gone away and saves at the end not. I mean, come on. Like, this is theft. And to have this guy play the slime ball from Aliens, this is exactly what he is. Exactly to a T. And it just infuriates me. Because it's my – end of my rant on that is if you want to pay homage to a movie that you love and respect, like let's just say Aliens for this reference, there's a way to pay homage to it, but there's also a way to fuck it in the ass, and that's what you're doing. You are a douchebag director. Yeah. I, that's all you are. I hear where you're coming from, especially so, like, because what happens after this, Martin kills the queen – Zeus hears her death cry screeches and then rallies the troops. Rallies the troops, goes to find him. He's he's on a horse, Eric. I'm gonna he's on a, a zombie horse. horse. He's on a zombie horse. And people. he has armor. On he has only armor. a one oh part of on his body that why? why? Like Oh, I, I I can't wait for the fans to listen to my frustration. And they and they run to the Bly Hotel to kill because the peace treaty that they had is now off. And the peace treaty is off that Zeus never even agreed to. Yep. This was and, just the uh, point. He goes to the uh, – it's full-on attack. And so obviously um, everyone is separated and they're doing their thing. Let's just cut to it. Everyone kind of has their own moments where they all die. They go to the vault first. Dieter, in a, a heroic move, pushes Van into the vault and closes it on well, hold him. On. Hold on, before that, that was a good kill before that. I'm sorry to interrupt you again, but that kill when uh, when when uh, when Dave Bautista is talking to that chick and then the elevator doors open, the zombie smart zombie comes out and he grabs her head and twists it around. Oh, yeah, by the way. fucking so, shoulder bone snapped. That uh, was cool. That was cool. And while all this is happening, they I, uh, we need to obviously point out that they know that a nuke is going to be bombing their location. Very, very soon. In fact, they say it over and over again in about 20 minutes. It's going to be here 20 minutes or something like that. And they proceed mm -hmm. to take their time very calmly. He talks. Scott talks about his relationship issues with Maria. Mm -hmm. And Dieter and Van are able to joke around, not giving a shit about the nuke that is coming there. 
even though they have to. Oh, uh, I looked it up online. Uh, apparently, somebody did the math that $22 million or $2,200 million in $100 don uh, um, denotion, donations. Oh, whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And bills. I can't think, can't think straight. Would weigh like something like 4,000 pounds. And to have that on a helicopter with about eight fully grown adults, um, it's just it's just hard math right there. And it just really wouldn't work out. That's amazing. God bless the internet. I mean, like, but but can we both agree that the chicken and her head twisted around and her collarbone snapping was pretty cool? Cool. It, yeah. it, that that was a pretty cool. There kill. were a lot of cool kills in this movie. I, and I say it will say it again. As bad as this script was, the kills were pretty cool. Yeah, that's all it was. I mean, like in the in the opening credits, just to go all the way back to the beginning, we get a girl with a fifty cal. And she just literally blew a zombie away all the way to his knees. That was like, cool. We got to saw uh, one of the army troops get his jaw ripped off. Right. Get his jaw ripped off. And then later, why this is going on, Martin, classic alien line, a classic alien scene, right? The slimy bad guy is getting away. He thinks he's getting away. He opens up the bag. He realizes, oh, wait a minute. There's not a queen head in here. This is a, a, a money counter machine, and then he hears the noise of the a, noise of the alien behind him. Oh, I'm sorry, the zombie tiger, and zombie tiger fucking goes revenant on his ass. That's all I could think about was the Caprio and the revenant. Like this guy got destroyed, and that was good. I actually enjoyed that. I was really hyped at that moment. That like, was pretty cool, and with a pretty really cool good. kill scene when the tiger crushes his face doesn't rip his head oh. off crushes it crushes it and you see like like his lower jaw and his tongue and his teeth and his lower teeth great i really enjoyed that that's the thing about this movie is that this movie is a, definitely a planet terror but this movie is trying to market it itself as something else or maybe it thinks it's something else but then a planet terror because if i was going into this expecting a planet terror all right a little, a little Let's go. You know, when is when is Bruce Willis's nuts going to fall off? Let's go. Exactly. But, you know, but no, that doesn't happen. Uh, Why that's going on, uh, Kate leaves to go find her friend? Yeah, to go find Gita, and she goes right into the lion's den at, a, at, a, at Olympus. Nope. And nope. Lu luckily, she's able to hide inside of a car as the army of the undead alien, whatever the hell pass by her because uh, they're on to go kill them at the Bly. Um, and for some reason, they just kind of skip over her, which is They don't something. smell her, I guess, because like hell, even, even in the first season of The Walking Dead, when they're in the city of Atlanta, they find out, hey, the way that we can walk among the dead is if we douse ourselves in their blood and their guts so we don't smell alive. We smell dead, a la camouflage. All right, stupid, but we'll go with it. That's fine. I mean, she didn't even do that. She's walking around in an LV LV246 white tank top in a car, and a zombie's looking right at her, and just goes, no, I got a mission to do, bitch. But then the rest of the team gets the money. They're running through the casino and a slow-mo action scene. Again, another thing. I'm enjoying the action. This is fun. De Batista... Uh, the other chick and the, the guy with the blonde hair just blowing zombies away. They're all smart. And then I see zombies with blue eyes, and it takes me out. And I go, why do zombies have blue eyes? Is that just because it's in the dark? Because earlier in the film, when they were in the dark, the zombies, they had blue eyes. I'm like, oh, maybe it's a thing. Whatever. But then they start to shoot more zombies, smart zombies. Now, again, folks, this isn't like your mindless Romero Ooh, zombies. These are like smart, running fast, who can dodge bullet, think zombies. They shoot them, and then they're like Terminator. They have metal skin. Eric, what the fuck did I see? Uh, did, well, you were surprised about that. Let's talk about the thing that we missed, actually, where before the, the army was called and rolled out, I forgot to bring this up, and I apologize for that. Zeus takes his beheaded uh, wife's body back to the Olympus and then gives her a uh, C-section, I guess, and rips out the the fetus, which I, I'm assuming died? Because it was blue. 
The fetus was he blue. It fit in the ball in his hand. From the dead woman's uh, body, it was glowing blue, and then it just like faded. And so I'm assuming that it died, and that he was just triggered by that. Um, but, but there we go. We get to see a metal. aborted zombie fetus, which which was which is again this going off of what I said earlier with my description of me throwing my seltzer, like like. I'm done. Like, I'm just done. Like, how much more do we have to go? And then to see, I mean, Eric, when they shoot these smart zombies in the face who were human, all we yeah. see the ritual is Zeus bites that douchebag guy. And then the next scene, we, you know, later in the movie, at the end, he comes back as a smart zombie. We don't know the ritual. So there are shooting smart zombies in the face. And then they have a metal skeleton underneath. You know this movie should have been called? What's Seriously. I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm, I'm not joking at all. This movie should have been called. This movie should have been made. Army of uh, the Alien Dead? Not even that. I mean, like, Dead Rising. The reason why I said Dead Rising is because that was one of my favorite Xbox games of all time. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? The, yeah, the, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The mall. Yep. Love that game. You can do whatever you want. It's kind of like Grand Theft Auto in a mall with zombies for fans who don't know what I'm talking about. And the sequel to the game, Dead Rising 2, takes place in Vegas. Yeah, That's what this should have been. So why is there smart zombies that were once human that have metal skeletons? And why do they have blue eyes? Again, a lot, a lot of questions in this movie. Um, You'll get it in the sequel. Fuck you, Snyder. Let's uh, let, let's wrap it up uh, with the let's helicopter. Um, you know, obviously, Kate finds Gita, who was just unchanged, uh, just sitting in the in a room. We don't know why room. they were because Zeus had these three girls for no reason. He was going to convert them, I guess, and but he was just taking his time. Uh, and instead, they got they got Whatever. the officer first for some reason. Okay, uh, but we'll I, again, um, out of order and just kind of just worked out. But no, she's still alive, and good luck, Kate found her. And so they go up to the, get the helicopter. They get they uh, get confronted by um, Zeus, who throws the spear at the coyote, kills her. Does he kill her? No body, no death. Un there's. Uh, there's again, we're a lot of, missing a lot of details, but it really doesn't matter. Another person is sacrificed because Guzman sacrificed himself. Uh, uh, Lily sacrificed herself. Uh, Dieter sacrificed himself. Everyone's just like, no, you go, you go, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go. And it's just, Jesus, stop. Like, make a, make a move. You don't have to do any of this. Coyote could have gotten on the helicopter. She has a gun. She mm -hmm. could just throw the the head back or throw it off of the roof like she did and then just run to the helicopter. But either way, the helicopter leaves, does this weird nosedive. Zoof does like a power jump, gets on, and then we have a helicopter fight scene in the helicopter where guns are – it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> I can hear the defeat in this coming. It really from does it because at this point too, we we've also shown that every one of these cast members, any one of this this crew, has amazing accuracy and also mm -hmm. horrible accuracy. They will go from never missing a headshot consistently for the first like thirty kills in front of them to not being able to hit a fucking body that is point blank close to them. It right. doesn't make sense. Right, but and here, then and then and then, and then Zeus bites Bautista in the shoulder. Uh, nuclear bombs come in, explodes, boom! Fucking helicopter crash lands. The helicopter pilot that I loved gets impaled by a blade. It looks like, and I'm like, I'm sad because I really enjoyed her. She was fun. Did Gita die? Who cares? Uh, because who her cares? kids. Where, where was Gita? It, she was point. in the she was in the front seat of the helicopter. It doesn't matter. She's probably I dead because. Body. The doesn't doesn't fucking matter because they blew up the fucking quarantine camp with that nuke anyway. They did, and then you know, Kate comes out, and you know, her dad, you know, Dave Bautista is, is dying from the bite. You know, they have a little moment here. Here's some money that I took for you to go live your life and have a food truck. You kept on saying food truck. It's like uh, evidently Bautista loves food trucks in California way, and he's starting to turn. He does turn. She shoots him. Boom. 
done. The screen is black. It's not over with at that point, folks. No, the screen's black for about two to three seconds, and then we get a survivor from the nuclear blast in the center of town. Fuck radiation. We get the guy who the uh, nerd... Van. Van. We get Van who got thrown into the safe. He somehow escaped that safe door that Van couldn't break for well, half an hour, but somehow he's he's good. He has all the money. This is an emergency release of the other end. How did he? I just, I just don't understand. He gets locked into us. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm not going to make the show go long. So he somehow escapes this unescapable vault. He survives. He gets out, and he's in the middle, the middle of the nuclear blast. Radiation doesn't matter. He has all the bags of money, tra- just walks gets into a car out of nowhere. He's completely fine. And he gets bit in the arm, but we saw Batista change within minutes when he gets bit in the shoulder. Saw everyone change in minutes. Minutes. But this guy, this guy gets bit in the arm. He's cool. He's a little sick. He gets to Utah. He's like, hey, I want a private plane. They're like, no, because, you know, fuck you. And he's like, here's like, well, I don't know, $10 million. And like, all right, private plane it up. And he's not feeling good. He drinks champagne with some stewardess. They say they don't look good. And he goes into the bathroom because he's like, I just got to go to the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom. He lifts up his arm. Oh, there's a bite. And then the pilot says, we're going to go to, we're going to be arriving to Mexico City soon. So, ba 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 sequel, Mexico City will now be overran by zombies. That's not a good, that's not a good ending. No. That's, that's not good. It's not a good movie. Um, this is probably the worst zombie main mainstream because there's a lot of underground, but this is probably the worst mainstream zombie movie I've seen since probably World War Z. Well, should we get into it then? Yes, let's get into it. Eric, do you want me to go first? Or you want to go first, buddy? You choose this time for the show. Uh, I, I'll go first. I think I said a lot of my piece, and I'll uh, just wrap it up in a nice little bow here. Um, as much as I would love to give this a no bag, I still think that there were redeeming qualities in the zombie movie um, in that just the kills were, were fun. Everything else was fucking horrible. And I, I'm repeating myself, like I said, at the beginning of the show here that I really did like the concept of it. If there's a sequel that's going to give me more of a story, more of an answer that's going on, I, I don't know. I'm not really interested to to watch the movie as much as I'd rather just get the answers online and have that might be a deciding factor if I watch a sequel or a prequel or not. But again, like the characters, not all of them were good. Not all, many of them weren't necessary. It just was hard to watch a lot of these because I didn't know where the fuck this was going. 40 minutes to get to the introduction uh, through the introduction before we get to the meat and potatoes here. That's where your two and a half hours went. You could have cut out even more if you just eliminated the whole Kate uh, and the Gita thing completely unnecessary. Both Mm -hmm. of those characters didn't need to be in this movie at all. Didn't need to be in here. You could have had everything else. Your, your helicopter moment. You could have had the coyote moment, everything else at the Bly uh, suite. You did not need to have them do any of that. But um, again, I don't know what happened or who they're related to or how they got into this movie, but that's just how it is. It's a small bag. It's the smallest of of, it's a half of a small bag. I I bought a small bag and then I tripped on my way into or I threw half the bag from after watching a zombie baby. That's what happened there. It's it's just. It's just not a good movie. I would. I'm not. I'm not going to tell people to watch this movie if they like zombie movies. That's that's great, but it's not really worth. I don't, you know what I mean? Like it just pissed me off. It, right. It pissed me off more than it entertained me. Right. That's I'm just flat sure. out. That's just flat out what it is. Um, I am trying to be as gracious as you. Uh, and knowing this is a sentence from the internet that I read. It says, in September of 2020, it was announced that a prequel film and an anime-style television series, which is a romantic drama heist series, is in development to expand the franchise. What fucking franchise? I am so... My review is about the director, Snyder. You are the douchebag pack. Like I said earlier in the fucking review, 
you made Dawn of the Dead. 300 was okay. But then you gave us, uh, you know, Watchmen, which I'm probably one of the few that actually really like that film. And now you give us this in the Snyder Cut, which is, again, even more of a douchebag move. I don't like you. You are Michael Bay. Um, and you make shitty films. Sucker Punch would be another one. Like, it just... And I'm, I'm, and I'm, and I'm hoping because you're a name, so I'm hoping that you're going to have like a kernel of greatness, kind of like uh, Michael Bay when he did Pain and Gain. Like that was like a kernel of greatness, where it's like, okay, that was fun, that was entertaining, but you just shit the bed on Dave Bautista, and you floundered his fucking career. And I just, I hope he fucking sees the light at the end of this dark tunnel. Uh, you had a great idea. Hey, they're not zombies. It was a super soldier embedded with alien DNA from Area 51. Why do I have to read the plot to understand that? Why could you say that in your fucking film, you jackass? I, I just, you are the douchebag pack. This movie is a part of douchebag filmmaking. Just, just, just big arms and big guns and just nonsense. Just very stupid. Cobra is better than this movie, and that's what Cobra is. I just, I, this movie makes me angry. It insults my fucking intelligence. I, I just, I don't understand it. If you're going to rip off aliens, then rip it off. Don't fucking rape it. And it clearly, this movie is all the way to the point of you're going to rescue the young girl. You're going to get her from the, from the evil monster. And then you go to the roof to escape, and the helicopter's not there until the last minute until the nuke explodes. That's the ending of Aliens, Eric. Mm -hmm. That's the ending of this movie. Like, it's just really pissing me off. The gore was fun, but I think the problem with this movie is that this movie does not give me the chance to understand if this if if I'm if I'm here for gore or not. Am I here for gore? Am I here for a serious dramatic film? Am I here for um, something political because they're like, hey, the president's going to relaunch a nuke on the 4th of July. That'll be funny. We all know what that reference is. I mean, like, so what? It, it's, it's frustrating. It's confusing. I was, I was, I was going to give it a small bag with you, but after my rant right there, this movie's a no bag. This movie's definitely going to be the worst film of the year category for us. Like, this is dog shit. This is not, if you are a zombie fan who was listening to this movie, don't waste your time. You're going to be upset. I know I am a zombie fan. This movie pisses me off. Do not see this movie. This is bad. This is one of the worst films we've seen all year. This is dog shit, Eric. Yeah, this, I, I agree. I, I got a little heated. I'm sorry. You're, yeah, it's calm, calm it down. Get a seltzer <laughs> in you. I, I ran out. I got to get more in the garage. But everybody... We hope you enjoyed this episode. I know Eric and I really had a good time talking about this one. Uh, and finally, we do. We finally agree that a movie is shitty. I mean, finally. So we're down that path. Next week, we'll come back with another awesome episode. Like always, make sure to check us out at MovieGuysPodcast.com. Check us out on all the social media platforms or wherever you get your podcast. You can download us from there. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back next week for another awesome episode. Have a good night.